was eight years old when I started 4-H. Somebody started it right in our township, so it was our neighbor girls that started it. I think I started 4-H probably when I was about six. My parents were the 4-H leaders, and my older brother and sister were in 4-H. So I'm pretty sure whatever the minimum age was, that's when I started. We had projects each year. One year we did cooking, one year sewing, and one home improvement. There was special things that we had to cook each year, and they advanced from one year to the next. And these were the things that we exhibited at Achievement Days. I think back then it was more geared towards the farm kids, whereas now you have a lot of things that the city kids would be interested in doing. Uh, back when I had 4-H Achievement Days, there was a lot more livestock because there was a lot more kids living on a farm. And one thing I've noticed is back then there was a lot more white and red ribbons at Achievement Days. So if you didn't work real hard on a project and you didn't put some, the effort into it, your ribbon reflected that. I was a member from the time I was nine, and I think it was 19 that you could be a member till nine to 19. And then I was, uh, after that I was in college, so I was assistant leader for those few years that I was in college, like one or two years. My involvement in 4-H, like I said, started when I was probably at the minimum age. We were always active in 4-H. Uh, I went to 4-H camp several times, Achievement Days, 4-H uh, Horse Show, and most of the other events. I've also been involved in 4-H livestock judging, 4-H dairy judging, 4-H land judging, and I think I did crop judging one year as well. Uh, pretty active. I did not finish 4-H. I did not get my final year in because that was the year that I went off to Air Force basic training and that's why I didn't quite fully graduate from 4-H. I liked both the cooking and sewing. The cooking we usually would make something at each meeting. Probably somebody would give a demonstration or we would all cook something. Sewing was a little bit harder. We had a leader that insisted every seam be perfectly straight, so we did a lot of ripping out, but we did become so that we did sew straight. and Made a few things. I remember making a tablecloth that I still have, a lunch cloth that was fringed around the edge. And we usually kept these things nice. We didn't use them because we took them to the fair, and after that we would use them. It's Forge Achievement Days, and it was a lot of work to get ready for it. But, you know, once you got your stuff there and the judging was done, you got to see kids that maybe you only saw once or twice a year. So you can meet up with them and talk and see how things have been going. So it was kind of like a family reunion. We had a very good leader at the time. I don't know if we appreciated her, but her name was Mary Ann. She had a daughter my age, and she was very strict. Everything had to be perfect, or, like I said before, we tore it out and started over, but we did learn to sew straight and to cook right, and I probably appreciate her now more than I did back then when she was leading. The next leader, then, was just the opposite. She was whatever goes, and, of course, then we didn't win blue ribbons, and then we appreciated the first leader. Our 4-H club uh, always had my parents as leaders. We had a couple other parents assisting, but they were the ones that really ran the show. And they made sure that all the records were done and all every, everything was geared towards being the outstanding 4-H club of the year. And they always made sure that if there was something that could be done in a meeting for points, that was done. The records were all turned in. And for many years, it was between us and one other 4-H club for top boys 4-H club of the year. So they were very studious and made sure everything got done. 
There were five girls in our, and they were all close neighbors. Two were sisters, one was the leader's daughter, and another was a girl that was being homeschooled. And I think that was probably all of us in the, the group. And then some graduated out, so it ended up we were just like two or three. I think some got tired of being in 4-H and ended up with just a very few in the club before I quit. The size of our 4-H club, it varied from one year to the next because we'd have kids that would graduate out or we'd have new kids coming in. And I suppose it varied between 6 and 10. And we were the Litchfield Boys 4-H Club, and there was a Litchfield Girls 4-H Club, so it was all boys in our club. From what I've heard, 4-H has changed drastically over the years. Like, a long time ago, it was just lots of farming and agriculture stuff with, like, cattle or whatever, and you had to be in a club. You know, that was just, like, what everybody did. But now, like, somebody like me, you know, I'm not big on farming, I can still be in it. There's, like, artsy stuff, and you get to do, like, community service work, and you get to just make posters on dogs, because, you know, you're still learning, but you're not just learning about that one specific subject anymore. And also now, you don't have to be in a club, which, I guess... That wasn't allowed a long time ago, you know, like a long time ago, it was just like known to be in a club. I feel genuinely lucky to be able to have the opportunities that I have in 4-H, especially since they were not available long ago.